I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will discuss how to sketch reciprocal function from graph part 1. In part 1 we will consider a graph where we have x intercepts. In part 2 we will consider a graph without any x intercept. Now let's look into an example where we have different kinds of x intercept. Uh, what I'm trying to say is kind of like this. Let me draw a function here. So I'll take an example of a polynomial function and let us say this is a cubic function which is kind of like this. So cubic function will have a smooth curve. So this particular function has two x intercepts. One of them seems to be linear. The other one seems to be quadratic in nature. Well, we can say order is odd here and even in this case since this one crosses the x intercept like a line it should be kind of linear and this seems to be of order 2 where it turns right let us say that this point is 1 and let us say this is minus 2 so we are just taking some values at random so that it's easy for us to communicate now when you are given a sketch like this, we know domain and range of this function is all real numbers and let us see how to sketch reciprocal of this function. So I am calling this function f of x. So we have a function here which is f of x and now we will sketch the reciprocal of this function and I am saying r of x is actually equals to 1 over f of x. So when a graph is given to us, we don't really have to find the equation. Okay, to sketch reciprocal, we know one thing, that at x intercepts, reciprocal of the function will have vertical asymptotes. So first step is, let us draw vertical asymptotes at the x intercepts. So that should always be the first step. So here we are, vertical asymptotes. Now the second step should be look for the points where the function value is 1, right? Let us say this is 1 for us and let us say that this is minus 1, okay? This is minus 1 for us. In that case, on the graph, where do we have 1? So if I draw a horizontal line at 1, it here intersects at 3 points, this, this, and this. For minus 1, it intersects at this point. So these points which I have marked are the points where f of x is equals to plus or minus 1. Well, we know at these points, value of our reciprocal function is also going to be same, plus or minus 1, right? So these are the invariant points. So they are common to both the function and its reciprocal. Now let's look into the three different intervals which are divided on this plane because of the two x-intercepts. So if I look from minus infinity to minus 2 in this case, now in this interval we know f of x is positive, right? since f of, oh, sorry, negative, okay, f of x is negative here, and therefore it implies that r of x is also going to be negative. That is one thing. And what we know is if the function is approaching a very high value, negative, then the reciprocal is approaching zero, so negative. Now, if the function is approaching 0, as is after minus 1, as it goes towards 0, then the reciprocal value will increase to a very high value. So, so the function on this side will be kind of like this, increasing towards negative infinity. On the other side, kind of like this, decreasing towards 0, right? So that becomes the part of reciprocal function. So as we see, as x approaches minus infinity, f of x 
approaches minus infinity, r of x approaches 0, but from negative side, since this is negative. Is it okay? Now let's look into the right extreme. When x approaches positive infinity, we see f of x is approaching positive infinity, and therefore r of x should approach 0, but from the positive side. Right? So what I'm trying to say is, as the function is approaching positive infinity, the x value, y value is also approaching positive infinity, its reciprocal will approach 0. So we'll have this kind of a graph. At 1, we know it'll, it is going to cross, so that's the invariant point, and as the function approaches 0, reciprocal will approach a higher value. So we'll have this kind of a graph here also, right? So we can join these points, and that's the reciprocal function on the right side. So that is in the interval from 1 to infinity. So in this interval, what you note is that f of x is positive and reciprocal is also positive. Another thing which you notice is that f of x is increasing, right? We have f of x increasing, right? So what happens to the reciprocal function? Decreasing. Check it out. That's a check. So we find this is decreasing as you move from left to right. So all these characteristics which we learn can be applied to sketch, but the process becomes very simple. Now let's look into the center portion, which is between minus 2 to 1. So somewhere here we do have a maximum value, right? So let us say, we can always read it from the graph, that this value is 2. So what is the reciprocal of 2? Reciprocal of 2 is half, so it should be somewhere here, right? So we get this point. We know these points are invariant points, and we also understand that if the function is positive, reciprocal is going to be positive. If the function is approaching 0, reciprocal approaches infinity. So this part is kind of like this. Do you see that? So both sides. Minimum will be at here. So the maximum turns out to be the minimum for the reciprocal. We can join these and complete our graph. So that is how you can sketch graph of a reciprocal function from the given graph. Now in this particular example, what we had is a function with x-intercepts. In the next part, we'll consider example when the function will not have any x-intercept, right? Now here, you can see that the domain is restricted. We have the domain of the reciprocal function as all real numbers, but not equal to minus 2 and 1, which are, happens to be the x-intercepts for the function. As far as the range is concerned, range is all real numbers, but not equal to 0. For any reciprocal function, we'll always have a horizontal asymptote, right? As we have here, so we do have a horizontal asymptote, which is at y equals to 0, and we have vertical asymptote at x equals to minus 2, and x equals to 1, the points where there was x-intercept for the function, right? And as you see, wherever the graph is positive, reciprocal is also positive. If the graph is negative, reciprocal is negative. Intervals of increasing and decreasing, if the function is increasing, reciprocal is decreasing. Do you see that? So these are important things to keep in mind when you sketch reciprocal function from the given graph. I hope all the points are well taken care of. I'm Anil Kumar. You can subscribe to my videos and learn more about functions. Thank you and all the best.